Scripture reading this morning is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 through 6. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Word. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. There does not need to be a introduction to Miss Sherry. She just does a tremendous job for us. Let's put our hands together and welcome her to share the word of God. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. <sighs> Who out here has had cataract surgery? I thought he was going to steal my thunder. I had no idea where he was going with that children's sermon. Well, many of you know that in the, recently I've had cataracts removed from both of my eyes, and boy, what a difference it's made with my vision. And after I had my first cataract uh, surgery, I went to the doctor the next day to have the patch removed, and I, John was sitting there, and I looked at him, and I went, wow, I'm seeing you clearly for the first time in a long time. And he, and he sort of giggled, and he said, um, yeah, now you know you're married to a really old man. And I said, maybe I need to reconsider renewing your contract this year. <laughs> well, our, our scripture today tells us that for some, the gospel is about as clear as having cataracts on our spiritual eyes, and that we need to have them removed. We're suffering from spiritual blurry vision. And you know, I have a, um, well, you don't know, but I have this funny philosophy about washing my windows. My philosophy is if I can't see out, then no one can see in. So why wash them? You know, you don't have to have blinds. Why wash them? But as I was studying this scripture this week, it really was eye-opening to me, and I don't, mean, I don't mean that by a pun either. It was truly eye-opening for me, because what I discovered is if my window to God is dirty or blurry, I can't see him clearly. And if I can't see God clearly in what he has purposed for me, then I cannot live out the gospel because I have spiritual blurry vision. So this morning I ask you, how's your vision? Are you seeing God clearly? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just ask you right now to, to be with all of us here. Decrease Sherry, increase your Holy Spirit. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. 
And we will always give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today is actually Transfiguration Sunday. It's the revelation of God's glory. In Matthew, it says that God was, that Jesus was transfigured right before them, that his face shone like the sun and his clothes were as white as light. As Christians, we're to catch that vision of glory and we're to place it in our hearts and in our minds. And then we just have to trust that God is going to continue to bless us, that we can go and preach the gospel. Amen? Amen. Our scripture opening this morning, Paul is saying that the gospel is veiled or hidden. But there's, if you read certain versions of the scripture, it says it's veiled or hidden only, only for those who are perishing. He wasn't speaking to those of us who are already believers. He was talking about the folks that maybe had heard of the gospel or maybe had that one-on-one uh, relationship with someone who was trying to preach the gospel to them, and they chose not to accept the truth. As believers, we hope and pray that there wouldn't be anything that would blind us from accepting the gospel. But there's someone out there, and he's called the God of the age, and we know him as Satan. And Satan is real, and he's out there, and he will blind us whenever he can. And unfortunately, there's people out here in the world, believers and non-believers, that that will happen to at different times in their life. Uh, Several years ago, there was a TV show on, and it was called In Plain Sight. And the premise of the show was that that the government agencies would take families and and they would put them in the witness protection program and hide them in plain sight so that they could still live but people wouldn't know where they were. Well, Paul is saying today that the word of God is available, it's open, and it's visible to everyone plain sight. There's no hidden agenda. There's no small print to read. All we have to do is listen to the truth, repent and be saved, and then go out and do what we're supposed to do. But sometimes there is something or someone who will be a stumbling block to us. Now, as I was reading the scripture, there's only four passages, but as I was reading the scripture, three points came to me. So today I'm going to be preaching on the DHL, not the ABCs. The DHL, darkness, humility, and light. What kinds of things would blind us that we would stay an unbeliever? We live in a dark and troubled world. We're being bombarded on all sides by earthly things. There are too many people out there that are saying that they're experts in too many subjects. They tell us how we're supposed to think and what we're supposed to do. And then we're rejected when we don't agree with them because we actually think for ourselves. And all of this could make for some very dark times. Sometimes darkness comes in when we have power. One of the jobs of, for us as parents is to raise our children to be respectful, honest, loving, godly adults. We save our money to send them to college, and we pray that they will choose a profession that they can support their family and raise their children with the same values that we instilled in our children. But then, the corporate power mongers get a hold of them. And all that's important is the bottom line, making more money for the company, producing better, or you're out of here. The spiritual light is extinguished. The gospel light is extinguished. And Satan can chalk up a tally mark. And sometimes we, go, we get into despair, and that brings on a darkness. 
We can't watch television any day of the week without seeing a commercial for depression, anxiety, and bipolar disorders. More and more of our family and friends are suffering from one of these disorders, especially our kids. And why is that? They feel like they're in this darkness all alone, that they're down in a deep hole that has just swallowed them up and they're by themselves. Or we go to the doctor, and the diagnosis isn't a good diagnosis, and there's a voice that starts talking in in our heads, and it says, if he's really a good God, why would he let this happen to you? Because you're a really good person. Satan challenges the unbeliever. Sometimes, It's really hard to be pulled up out of that hole. But this morning, Paul is letting us know that there's a better way, and it's called the light of Christ. And when we accept the light of Christ, we get with it the promises of forgiveness, love, hope. Oh, my goodness, hope, grace, and eternal life. And then sometimes those dark days turn into sadness. And there isn't one person here that hasn't been touched by sadness at some time in their life. Maybe it's the loss of a loved one or a loss of a job or a relationship. And it's okay to be sad. But it's not okay to stay in that sadness. We have to get out of that sadness. I spoke with Tony Matthews this past week, and I said, Tony, how you doing? He said, Sherry, I'm hurt and I'm sad, but by the grace of God, I go on. Praise God that he is such that, he is such that man. But don't we even think that God had a heavy and sad heart when his son died on the cross? But I want you to hear this good news. Weeping may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Folks, when we walk that valley of sadness, God is going to be there. He's going to take us to the mountaintop again because you know why? There's joy in the morning. Amen? Joy in the morning. Don't stay in the sadness. Get on the mountaintop. And when we continue in our our scripture lesson this morning, Paul's saying, we don't preach ourselves, we preach Jesus Christ. And the last time I checked, I couldn't find one I in the word God or Jesus. And last week, if we're preaching the gospel, last week Pastor Eddie said, we're all preachers. You don't have to be up here to be a preacher. We're all preachers. And if we're preaching the gospel, then we better not have I, I, I in the topic of conversation. I was awakened in the middle of the night. I have the TV on, and I heard this TV evangelist, and he was just preaching away. And here's what I heard. I did this, and this happened. I sent this much money in, and this happened. And I encourage you to do the same thing. And then it was just blah, 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 blah. That's all I heard. (coughs) That's all I heard. But when we look back over Jesus' ministry, he preached humility, honesty, and truth. He pointed out those people that were taking God's word and twisting it. He said there were two men that went into the temple to pray, a Pharisee and a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and he was praying. He said, God, I thank you that I'm not like those other people, the robbers, the evildoers, and the adulterers, and even that tax collector. I, I fast twice a week. And I tithe, I tithe, I give a tenth of everything I have. Folks, it wasn't his to begin with, was it? I, I, I don't know about that. I, I, I. This is the perfect example that Paul was talking about, that we don't preach ourselves. And when we think about Paul's past, when he was known as Saul, 
people had a hard time believing any word he might have said. But after his life-changing experience on the Damascus Road, Paul was totally committed to preaching the gospel. He had to be transparent. Just about everybody knew the old Saul. So he had to be honest and open about his old self. Listen to what he said about himself in 1 Timothy. I thank God Jesus our Lord. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has given me strength that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord has poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that needs full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. The word of God for the people of God. Because of his humility, now he could preach the, the truth and the gospel. Through his transparency, he humbled himself before the throne of grace. He had nothing to hide. His spiritual vision was twenty twenty. And as soon as Ananias baptized him, the scripture says that he preached the Christ in the synagogues, that he was the son of God. I have said over the past 15 plus years that everybody has a testimony, and you need to be ready to say that testimony any time, any place. But if it is not focused on what Christ has done to change your life, then you are not preaching or serving Jesus. If if we haven't humbled ourselves and become transparent, then we need to do some introspect intentions, refocus, and then preach Jesus Christ as the Lord of this world. Transfiguration, today uh, our, our message is all about light being transformed into the person that we've been created for, out of darkness into light of service. Um, depending on what website you go to, but I went, on, I went on Google and I typed in there how many times light would appear in the Bible. And, uh, and it also depended on the version that they were looking at. But I found that it was in the Old Testament anywhere from 133 to 177 times. And in the New Testament, 86 to 95 times, which I was sort of surprised but it, that it was lower than the Old Testament. But no matter what sight, no matter how many times you can count light in the Bible, it's mentioned enough times that it has to be important. It has to be important. Even before I was a Christian and I started reading the Bible and I had started getting some kind of understanding of what light meant, I was a light lover, and let me explain that. I never liked to stay in the dark. John can tell you that. In fact, we had the same we had that conversation this morning as I was walking through the dark house. As a child, I had terrible dreams, and my mom would turn a very low, soft light on in my bedroom. And as I grew up, I've always slept with the TV on to have the light of the TV on. I have night lights in the bathroom, the hallways, and every room that you go into. I don't even like to watch a movie or television with the light off. I have to have some kind of light. When our children come to visit, they go around and they unplug all the lights because they personally can't sleep with any lights on. So I'm just going to take this opportunity right now and just thank Thomas Edison for making my life a little bit brighter by inventing the light bulb. Thank you, Thomas. But in the beginning of creation, God spoke light into existence. He didn't need a light bulb. He spoke light into existence. He said, let there be light. And there was The Old Testament folks had absolutely no idea what it would mean 
that Christ would be the light of the world. God gave us his light to shine in our hearts through his son, Jesus. And Paul makes it very clear that when we come out of the darkness into the light, that we gain knowledge to preach the gospel. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people put a light, light a lamp and then put it under a bowl. No, they set it on the stand and they let it light that everybody in the house can see. And in this same way, your light will shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Elizabeth uses this verse as the verse to support our journey center. We are going to be that light on the top of the hill that cannot be hidden. That's what we are, the light. As believers, we are to receive this light and let it guide us, <clears throat> excuse me, as we relate to others. Christ's light will enable us to speak up when it's the right thing to do. His light will help us to stand strong and courageous when the rest of the crowd denies the truth. I read this week that the Philadelphia Eagles are the most faith-based team in the entire NFL, that they have couples Bible study on Monday night, they have team Bible study on Thursday night, and they have church on Saturday because they play on Sunday. They are standing for Christ. Amen. Oh my goodness, I was so excited about that. Christ-like will help us to share the gospel with those who have never heard it and to be a servant to those who are homeless, sick, in prison, and hungry. The light of Christ won't let anything stop us from living the plan that has been set before us by our, our almighty God. Paul says that when we gain knowledge, well, we will gain knowledge only when we put it into practice what has been revealed to us. The more we pray, read, and act, the more understanding we will receive. Understanding brings knowledge, knowledge brings sharing, and sharing brings unbelievers to believers. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in darkness and will have eternal life. And then he says in John 12, I came to, into the world as light so that no one who believes will stay in darkness. Sometimes we believe in him and then we follow him. But as the disciples, they followed him and they became strong believers. This morning I want to share with you verse 7. We didn't read it as part of our scripture. It says, but we have this treasure in, pot, in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. These, these clay pots, these clay jars were created to hold the most precious of treasures, the Torah the Dead Sea Scrolls, all of the important documents of the day. God has given us these bodies, these temples. This is our jars of clay. It does not matter what shape they are or what condition they are. They were created by the Almighty God who is the master potter to hold the light of the gospel so that we can display we can see the display of Christ's glory. Amen? Amen. Years ago in the movie uh, E.T., the little boy Elliot could see E.T.'s heart because his chest would light up red, and he could see his heart beating. And when E.T. was dying, he needed to be plugged into the power source, the extraterrestrials. And his, his heart was beating really, really slow, and the light was going out. Now imagine if not only God could see our heart, but if we're talking to someone, if we're sharing the gospel, if we're preaching the gospel, and they actually could see our heart, 
Would our heart just be barely moving and it would be a very dull light? Or would our heart be pounding like this out of our chest? And the brightest light would be shining. God has given us the greatest treasure, his son's legacy. He has given us the ability to preach the gospel, to bring believers, unbelievers to believe, and to show people that they can have eternal life. This, this is such a gift. This is such a gift. Just like the jars will break one day, our bodies will pass away. But we are promised a new resurrected body to be glorified. We will be a new creation in Christ. So my challenge for all of us this week is that you rebuke whatever darkness is surrounding you and do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Be humble and transparent in your testimony. And then show the light of Christ either with your actions, more with your actions, and your words. And share the light of Christ. And may your blurry vision with your cataracts, your spiritual cataracts, go away. And from this day forward, that you would have 2020 Christ vision. Amen. Father God, we just thank you for this word. We all need to have our cataracts removed so that we can see you more clearly. Lord, I just thank you and praise you for all that you do in all of our lives, that you have set the path for us and that we can get rid of our blurry vision and have 2020 Christ vision. In your name we pray, amen.